That's so good, it's not fair. Do you love Italian food? This is called a pasta trafilata. It's absolutely beautiful. Of course you do. Oh my God, that's fantastic. But you probably don't love it as much as this guy. My name is Joe Farrow. I'm the chief food taster. And there's a whole lot of food to be tasted inside the sprawling Tuscan Kitchen in Burlington, Mass. Tuscan Kitchen is an artisan Italian experience. We are taking scratch Italian specialties and we are celebrating those with our guests. Joe Farrow's passion for Italian food runs deep. He created a gourmet pasta company that he sold in 2006, opened the first Tuscan Kitchen in Salem, New Hampshire in 2010, and now has this brand new location in Burlington that is the culmination of all his life experiences. You know what, my whole life has revolved around artisan Italian food. I mean, I'm the son of Sicilian immigrants that came here in the late 50s, grew up in a little Italian bakery, and just have always been around scratch artisan Italian cuisine. a few of the facts you should know about Tuscan Kitchen. The place is enormous, about 14,000 square feet. The restaurant is awash in warm woods and low lighting, with seating for more than 500. And just to get to the dining room, you must walk through the Tuscan Market, where fresh pastas, prepared foods, pizzas, panini, and irresistible desserts practically call out to customers. But despite the size of the space, virtually everything here is made from scratch. We make all of our own breads, all of our own pastas, all of our own desserts, gelatos. We're actually starting to make our own salumi, which is sopratata, salamis, and things like that. Each meal at Tuscan Kitchen starts with a basket filled with house-made focaccia and ciabatta. And Joe and his team bake thousands of loaves every week. Right now I'm making a little focaccia. We're gonna put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I got a little bit of sea salt here and a little bit of rosemary. Then I'm gonna put this right into the wood oven. So the oven is about 800 degrees and this dough is gonna rise very quickly quickly, literally rising in front of your very eyes. You'll see it get all bubbly and light and airy and crisp, but it's absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a little more salt. That olive oil will just soak right into the bread, right in those little holes. It'd be absolutely beautiful. And that bread provides a delicious preview of what's to come. I think that it sets the tone for the meal because once you see how amazing that bread is, I think you realize that, okay, these folks really do walk the talk. They really make everything from scratch. They're that passionate about it that they would take the time and energy and effort to make all these things because it is that much better. The menu here is loaded with rustic Italian dishes with appetizers like arancini in a tomato porcini gravy and meatballs made with a blend of beef, veal, and pork that are putting Italian grandmothers out of business. I can't tell you how many people come up to me and say, I have to tell you, these are actually better than my grandmother's. Don't tell her. I don't know your grandmother. How would I tell her? And while Joe may not know your grandmother, he does know a lot about pasta. And he puts that knowledge to good use in dishes like tortelli stuffed with short rib, cannelloni filled with braised veal, and bolognese tossed with giant rigatoni, which is a perfect pasta to pair with the sauce. It's delicate, but yet it's got a, a certain al dente texture to it that works very well with the sauce, very rough, so it captures the sauce as well. Uh, and actually it's our number one selling pasta. It's a very simple dish, but it's a lovely dish. When it comes to meat, there's really one dish you've got to eat. The 28-ounce aged ribeye with a sea salt and rosemary crust and roasted garlic jus. It's huge. It's also known for having a very long bone. The bone is like literally like 16 inches long. It looks like a Fred Flintstone steak. If you really wanted to, you could pick it up from a bone and actually eat it like that. <music> Making so much food from scratch requires quite a crew. And here they work inside a large open kitchen with a long counter out front where customers can enjoy their meal and the lively atmosphere. And these have quickly become the hottest seats in the house. And those seats sell out first. You'll have couples that will go there just for the theater of it all. So you get to see everything kind of happen. The wood grill is right there in front of you. You have uh, the prosciutto slicer. You can see the pizza oven. And our open kitchen is dramatically more open than most because we want you to come eat in our home. And home really is what Tuscan Kitchen feels like for Joe Farrow, because for him, great food is everything. This is where I belong. I mean, I was born to be in the restaurant business. I've been in the food business for 25 years, and I've always enjoyed when people loved the food that we created for them. And so I'm home. This is what I love to do. Mm -hmm.